Thank you very much for the introduction. And without further ado, I would like to present to you a clinical case on HIV and STI prevention in the perspective of a sexual health counseling. So let's start on the client's profile. A 30-year-old Thai biological man using he, him pronouns came into PrEP clinic in Bangkok for a PrEP initiation process. He identifies as a cisgender gay man who has been in a relationship, a monogamous relationship with his boyfriend for two years, but has recently opened the relationship for one month. For those of you who are not familiar with the terms open relationship, it is a type of relationship where a couple are not sexually exclusive to each other, meaning that both of them are able to have multiple sexual partners while maintaining exclusive relationship with each other. He informed that he wanted to start using PrEP because his boyfriend started having sexual contacts with multiple sexual partners. His last sexual intercourse was a condomless inserted anal intercourse four weeks prior to the visit with his boyfriend, which means that he is not eligible for a post-exposure prophylaxis. However, he is eligible for a pre-exposure prophylaxis if his blood test today is normal. His sexual intercourse frequency was around once in every two weeks, and that he can determine whether the intercourse was going to occur beforehand which makes him eligible for the event-driven PrEP. When asked about his condom wearing behavior, he informed that he used to be very strict with condom wearing, but now he preferred condomless intercourses. And since he didn't want to have any sexual contacts with other partners, he determined his risk to be quite low. However, he was still concerned about the STIs and wanted to get the screening test to see if he's safe or not. So as you can see, there are some questionable behaviors going on here with this client. Firstly, he agreed to open his relationship without wanting to have any sexual contact with other partners, which makes it questionable about why he agreed to this arrangement in the first place. Secondly, he used to be very strict with condom wearing as protection, but now he prefers PrEP as a HIV prevention, which is a very effective tool. However, it is inferior in terms of other STIs protections. This begs the question of why he would want to change from a condom wearing to PrEP. So from this preliminary history taking, we can differentiate the problem list into three main points. Firstly, being the HIV and STI screening. The client wanted to receive a full panel of STI screening. Secondly, he needs to do an extra blood test for the PrEP initiation process. And thirdly, he may have a potential strain on the relationship due to those questionable behavior I've mentioned, which needs more explanation in order to assess if it is truly a problem for him or not. So this problem list also determines the management that we need to provide for this client. He needs to receive an NTHIV testing along with syphilis and um, chlamydia and gonorrhea self-testing, along with the hepatitis profile screening. He also needs to do the kidney function testing with an education on how to use even dripping prep correctly. And lastly, we need to explore more on his relationship and his sexual behaviors. With after the expiration, he has opened up and said that he was struggling with erectile dysfunction for five to six months already. His condition started right after he got a promotion to a high position in his workplace and informed us that his work environment was very stressful. He still had a hard time adjusting to the new position, which makes him more stressed about the position that he received. Moreover, he was recently recovered from the COVID-19 infection, which put more stress into his personal and his work life. He explained that he would have a shorter period of erection during the sexual intercourse, and that every time that he used a condom, he wouldn't be able to keep his erection strong enough for the penetration, which is why he preferred the condomless intercourse. And even when he has successfully applied a condom without losing his erection, he would still lose it again during the activity, resulting in him taking off a condom during sex. He said that he didn't want to open the relationship with his boyfriend, but he feels like he cannot satiate him sexually, 
which is why he agreed to this arrangement. He admitted that he has sexual performance anxiety, which reduced his desire to engage in the intercourse with his boyfriend. He informed us that he still had a nocturnal erection, which means that his hormonal level are in a very normal situation. And when asked about a perspective for sex, he believed that a good sexual contact is the one with the penetrative activity. So he's not very keen on foreplay. His foreplay duration would be around five to 10 minutes max. And he never engaged in a fellatio or oral sex before, meaning that his sex is going straight for the penetrative interaction with each other. So from all this information, we can add another problem to the table, which is an erectile dysfunction with three main causes. Firstly, being psychological aspect. He expressed that he feels very stressful about his work, and also he is struggling with the sexual performance anxiety, which can worsen the condition about erectile dysfunction. He also expressed a biological aspect on this problem. He is potentially having the post-COVID syndrome, which can also result in erectile dysfunction too. And the third and prominent problem or the causes of this condition is that he is having a condom associated erectile problem or the CAEP. For the condom associated erectile problem or the CAEP are erections issues that are related to the condom usage during the sexual interactions. This condition can occur during condom application and even during the sexual intercourse itself. One study found that 14 to 28% of male participants experience erection loss during the condom application and another 10 to 20% experience erection loss during the intercourse. One study done in the public STI clinic found that up to 37% of the participants have once been experienced CAEP in the last three months. Moreover, they found an association between CAEP and the risky behaviors, for example, an incomplete use of condoms during intercourse, which is exactly like our case today. So what I have done for him at this visit is to firstly prescribe him the even ribbon pills because his um, blood tests are all remarkable. And another thing that I have to do for him is to do the psychological aspect on erectile dysfunction problem. I have counseled him on a couple sexual communication since he expressed that he has never talked about his condition with his boyfriend before, and they have never communicated with each other about their sexual behaviors. So for him to open up with his uh, partner would help him a lot with the sexual performance anxiety that he is having. Another thing is to do the expectation management. Our client thinks that the only meaningful sexual contact was to do the penetrative sex, which put a lot of pressure on him, resulting in the worsening of the erectile dysfunction during the activity. So you see this vicious cycle of how sexual performance anxiety worsens erectile dysfunction and how erectile dysfunction also fuels the problem about the anxiety. So this has turned into a vicious cycle that makes him or the clients unable to enjoy the sex anymore. So what I did to him was to question his rationale behind his thinking about sex and inform him that the good sex doesn't have to always involve the penetrative activity and that he should communicate with his boyfriend and his partner about what is the good sex in their relationship. Secondly, I also give him information on the biological aspect. I educate him on the post-COVID syndrome that can cause an erectile dysfunction afterwards. However, the information on this regard is quite unclear in terms of scientific data. So it's just the, uh, giving the knowledge to him without any kind of solution for him. But lastly, this is the most important thing that we can do is to explain to him about the condom associated erectile problems. After education, I also advise him to do the, I educated him on uh, a correct condom application and advised him to do a self condom application in order for him to reduce the period of time he, he did for the condom application during sex. In Pripta Clinic, we offer free condoms for every client. So I 
encouraged him to bring home some and use it while he involved in the solitary sex or masturbation. I also advised him on how to improve the sexual arousal with his partners. For example, to increase foreplay durations from five to 10 minutes up until 20, uh, 10 to 20 minutes and increase the erogenous zone stimulation. These things can potentially help him with a stronger and long, longer lasting erections and help him through the condom application and in, uh, and in the courses process. Uh, his laboratory result came out remarkable, so I prescribed him one month worth of PrEP, uh, which he would use in an even driven regimen, and the follow-up visit will be next month. And in the next follow-up visit, after one month period of time, he informed that he has used an even driven PrEP correctly and that he used it in every sexual in the courses he have with or without condoms. He communicated with his boyfriend about his condition and re received a positive feedback. He said that they are now enjoying non-penetrative sex and also the foreplay duration has increased greatly. He practiced wearing condoms on his own and got more used to with the condom application process, resulting in the improvement on the erectile dysfunction. He said that he was able to maintain his erection during the condom application and the intercourse more than before, and his sexual performance anxiety was greatly improved with the encouragement from his boyfriend. And for this visit, he had received a three-month worth of prep, and the next follow-up visit will be the next three months. So as you can see, he has been improving in terms of erectile dysfunction and condom usage uh, from the, the first visit that we had with each other, he said that he have only been engaged in condom in the course only 30%, but now he engages more around 70%. So this is the end of the clinical test that I want to show you, but the next session will be about the key messages that we can encrypt from this clinical case. Firstly, it is very important for the healthcare providers to empathize with the clients and see that their problems are valid. What I mean by that was most of the time, the healthcare providers may not have enough time to explore the client's sexual behaviors, which is ironic to the fact that we are trying to treat sexually transmitted infections. So it is very important to listen to your clients when they inform you about the problem in their sexual behaviors. Secondly, sex positive discussion is the key to unearth true problems on HIV and STI. As you can see, there are many a cascade of actions done in the client's part in order to mend one single sexual problem. He has subject himself to a riskier behavior because he cannot wear a condom and then went on to arrange and change his relationship in order to fit in with this condition. Not to mention about the self-esteem issue that he might have experienced during this process. So I think we can all agree that a sexual problem is not just a tiny problem that we can just ignore, but it is a route to a biological, psychological, or even social problem in one individual. So the ability to discuss this with your client on the sexual issues without stigma and discrimination is the first step to take to help them through these problems. And the last thing is that the psychological approach is as important and as urgent as the biological management, especially in a sexual health problems. For some healthcare providers, once they hear about erectile dysfunction, they would go straight for the medications such as Sildenafil or Viagra, as we all know, which is very hard to do so because this kind of pill is not uh, freely available in Thailand. And to prescribe them safely, the clients need to go through an evaluation process by the specialist, which is a very time-consuming process. So it is a very easy solution for us healthcare providers to tell them to go buy some Viagra or Sildenafil, but it's not an easy solution for the client themselves. Instead, what we can do urgently and immediately is that to do the psychological approach to help modify the client's perspective and ask uh, if they're, um, and, and as you can see, the result in this regard is very prominent. In only one month period of time, the, the clients have increased a 30% rate of con condom SI to 70%.
So you see that the psychological approach can be as effective as the biological management. And that leads me to the last point about this case is that do not detach sex from the sexually transmitted infections. I have recently had a privilege to discuss with Dr. Benjamin Burbinton from the Kirby Institute in Australia about what he thinks is hindering Thailand's progress on HIV prevention and use equal use concept. One of the interesting topics that he brought up was how we discriminate against sex itself. In Thailand, sex still carries a lot of stigma in general, and we often associate sex with reproduction and marginalize people who have sex for pressure as unnecessary or invalid. And that affects our service that we provide for them too. For example, we will throw an MPM non-applicable advices to our clients and tell them to use the condom religiously and disregard any complaints that the clients may have. If this were to happen with my client from the clinical case that I've told you, it wouldn't be effective for him because the condom itself is the problem for him. So if we do not dig and explore into what makes that happen, the religiously condom usage will never satiate or will never alleviate his problem at all. Even some of the cases with HIV positive status has shared with me personally that they were told by the healthcare professor or the healthcare professionals to abstain from sex for the rest of their life because they can spread the virus to other people, which seems surreal right now because we already know about use equal use, but it still happened here in Thailand. So as you can see, the stigma did not just root itself in the clients, but also in the healthcare providers too, which makes it very hard to implement a progressive concept like U equal U or PrEP as a HIV prevention in this region. So this is the main reason why the stigma and discrimination against sex needs to be addressed in order for the healthcare professionals to be able to communicate with clients effectively. However, there is still another option that we can take a look at uh, which is the community-based organization or the key pop population-led services. Because here in IHRI, we believe that in order to understand the key population's perspective is to include them in the service that we wanted to provide. Therefore, the community-based organization and key population-led providers are quintessential in the conversation on ending AIDS and STIs. Some of you may question what can this kind of organization or services do to the, the um, clients or the patients? What they can do better than the healthcare professionals who has been trained is that they can have more time with the clients. They can involve in a more in-depth counseling and understanding the clients uh, that, that came in for the, the services. Also, they have a more accessible uh, or better accessibility to PrEP and PEP and STI screening. Moreover, they also understand the culture and the cultural sensitivity among the key populations. Not only do we talking about the sex positive feedback, but also to understand the key populations such as the transgender women, trans men, who have a very distinct and unique culture sensitivity. It is important for the for the healthcare provider to understand that and to include them as a healthcare provider can teach us a lot in order to understand this kind of cultural sensitivity. Moreover, then they can also uh, give the psychosocial support to our clients because they are from the same society, they are from the same community. So the clients will feel like they are, they are having a friend, they are having conversation with a friend rather than the healthcare professionals who may judge them from what they have done. So this is going to be a first step in order for them to open up about the problems that, may, that they may have and do not be there to um, communicate with the healthcare professionals. And these are all the references that I uh, referenced in order to understand about CAEP and all of these things that I've been talking about. And thank you so much for your attention. <laughs>